So we're in the company of Ishiguha today uh, in a very apt and beautiful setting which is the home of cricket and uh, I'd like to say I've played here, I haven't, but Isha you have haven't you? I have indeed, I've had four games here for England and I've loved every minute of it. Just being able to walk through the pavilion onto the pitch is, is something that you can't quite describe. It's, it's just one of those feelings that it makes you feel very proud and um, yeah, no, definitely one of, the, one of my favourite places to play. Now you're becoming an increasingly familiar face to sports fans, ironically uh, over the last sort of year and a half, but uh, to be fair to you, you've had a very successful sporting career before you started presenting on TV. Just remind us what you achieved as a, as a cricketer. Well, um, so I, I played 10 years for England and, you know, looking back at it, it was, it was a great, well, fantastic journey really. When I first got into the team in 2002, we were nowhere near beating the likes of Australia and New Zealand and um, over a course of a number of years we went on this journey to become the best in the world. Uh, we went to the World Cup in 2005 and lost out to Australia in the um, semi-finals which hurt us all pretty pretty badly and we went back and looked at ourselves and you know got more support with the UCB and uh, the English Institute of Sport on board, um, more coaches, um, greater development of the youngsters coming through uh, and we developed this very strong squad which going into the World Cup in 2009 we felt very comfortable and very confident in our own abilities and you know we'd had some ups and downs up until that point but right up, up until the World Cup we, we had 14 games unbeaten in one day internationals which gave us a lot of confidence going, in, going into the tournament and um, I still remember the final playing New Zealand on the North Sydney Oval and uh, opening the bowling was, you know, another proud achievement of mine. Um, to be able to open the bowling for England was was incredible, and to be able to be given that responsibility to lead the side um, was fantastic. Uh, alongside Catherine Brunt, of course, and uh, we ended up winning the game. And I remember <laughs> we had a, a little a little moment uh, when we were chasing down the runs. He lost a few wickets in a short short amount of time and I had to go and put my pads on. <laughs> and I, I remember thinking to myself, come on, please, we've got to do this. And I remember Holly Colvin hitting the winning runs and we all just came together um, as a group and literally just all our emotions came out at the same time. It was, you know, four years of blood, sweat and tears from 2005, really. We'd all worked towards that point and that was probably one of, one of my best moments playing for England. And in that period of time, is it fair to say that, uh, like, like a lot of women's sports, particularly women's team sports in this country, because there are similarities with the, with the rugby team as well, it, it changed from being perhaps a little bit patronised by a male-dominated sporting society to being taken really, really seriously, much more professional. And here we are now, 2012, and it's, it's, you know, it's on Test Match Special, it's on Sky. It is 100% respected and appreciated. And, and that's another thing that's come along with this journey, is that we are getting more respected and something that we've had to get used to is that it is a male dominated sport and that you know spectators are always going to be watching the men's game more so but we take ourselves very seriously you know we're playing for our country and we love cricket and that's that's what really comes through in the way we play our passion for the game and um, obviously now that TMS are coming on board Sky Sports have, have been very valuable to us over the last few years um, televising our T20 games. Um, it's, it's great for the women's game to be able to, to have that support and from 2009 when we won the World Cup, we won the World 2020 here in England and then we went on to whitewash the Australians and beat them in the ashes. It was our most successful year and on the back of that we had a lot of, um, a lot of support from the media um, to know that we were number one in the world and something that the country can feel very proud of and you know we're in that position again the girls are looking very strong um, they've got a series against India now ahead of a very important year where there's a 2020 World Cup in September uh, and then uh, another one day World Cup uh, in India um, in 2013. But here's the thing it's going to be without you because <laughs> at the ripe old wrinkly age 
of where well, you're 27 now, but Wrinkly you were. is the key word there. I think. But you were 26. <laughs> you were 26. You hung up your your, your spikes, or at least your, your international spikes. You're still playing for Berkshire, aren't you? I am. Um, yes. But so you, you you packed it in. I can't did. believe it. I did. It was it was a tough decision to make. It, it was one that I wasn't expecting to make at that time. I'd I'd always thought that I'd. I'd want to keep training and, and keep by, being part of the squad for the 2020 World Cup and uh, the One Day World Cup. But last year I, I sort of had a, a back problem and it put me out for a while and I was out of the squad then back in and, and then I had to put in a tremendous amount of work in the winter just to get myself fit and make sure that I was able to bowl and sustain all the training that I could. Um, I went over to India for six weeks um, off my own back just so I could focus myself on training completely. I, I was feeling in a really good place uh, and I went to New Zealand and I didn't necessarily get the opportunities I would have liked but um, I've always said that that's the nature of sport and it sort of it, was, it sort of helped make my decision for me in a way because I was thinking about um, my back, um, all the other things that came along with it. Um, I, I played 10 years for England and I just thought, you know, this is the right time. We have just seen you for the second year running now present uh, the IPL yeah. on, on ITV4 and you are becoming a familiar face now. That was really an opportunity that came out of nowhere. Uh, I wasn't expecting it whatsoever and ITV got in touch with me on Twitter. Uh, they needed uh, an Asian girl who knew about cricket to come and present the show and you know I <laughs> I took the opportunity and, and just embraced it really because I had no experience going into it. Um, I loved every minute of it, being able to talk about cricket 24-7 and meet some, some greats that I'd watched as a kid, people like Clive Lloyd, um, Alex Stewart, Mark Butcher, Mark Ramprakash, these guys who... Um, I continually watched um, as a youngster growing up on television and it was just a, a wonderful experience and thankfully they wanted me back again this year and, and through that um, other opportunities have come my way. Now um, you're also a student still, still a student, yes. you got your biochemistry degree, yeah. now you're postgrad at UCL in London aren't you? Yeah, I'm, I was doing a, a part time PhD but I've decided to transfer to an MPhil because it's less work mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and you're getting busy aren't you I am getting very busy but you know it's, it's great to it's be all busy good, I isn't love it? being busy sure uh, so uh, finally just a quick thoughts about the, the summer ahead from a cricket point of view male and female yes um, god there's so many opportunities for, for the girls and the guys um, obviously KP missing from the England one day side has given a lot of opportunities to the other youngsters coming through um, more opportunities to the likes of Papa and Morgan um, which is fantastic to see um, but they've been doing really well. Uh, obviously, they've, they've won against the West Indies, who are a formidable side in one-day yeah. cricket. South Africa, give us your tip. Yeah, South Africa is going to be should be a good brilliant series. series. Mm. I'm actually here on the first day of the Lords Test, so I'll be looking forward to that. Watching either Dale Stain or Jimmy Anderson running into bowl. Um, prediction. Think, prediction. Oh, come on. I think it'll be tight. But I'm going to say 2-1 England. Uh, and with the girls, obviously, they've had a, a tremendous run of form, won the last 14 games. I think they're feeling in very good form. Um, you know, the likes of Lottie, who's been going for, for such a long time and still churning out the runs like you wouldn't believe. I think she scored 500s in the last her last six games of the season, which has been incredible. And then you've got Sarah Taylor, very talented uh, with the bat and behind the stumps. Um, Catherine Brunt comes back into the side, uh, one of the quickest bowlers in the team uh, and the world, sorry. Um, so we're dominating cricket, basically. Yeah, we, we should be dominating. I male and, male and female. I feel very confident this summer um, going into Fantastic. the T20 World Cup. Um, and I'm just looking forward to watching it all. And as for you, who knows? But there's yes. lots going on. There is lots going on, but that's the beauty of life, isn't it? You never know what's around the corner.